Hong Kong is taking an environmentally friendly approach for the construction of a cable car system on the tourist island of Lantau. Six mules from Canada were officially unveiled as the pack transporters for the construction of the Tung Chung cable car system on the island. The mules will carry heavy construction materials such as cement, timber, sand and fuel down a two kilometre trail that is inaccessible to road vehicles. These construction materials were needed to build a concrete structure located inside the lush North Lantau Country Park. Helicopters helped out the mules to deliver materials on the steep trails. Archie Blair, project manager of contractor Maida Corporation, which owns the mules, says the productivity of the mules would very much depend on their mood for the day. On average, each mule can cart more than 400 kilograms of materials a day and will work for six to seven hours. The Tung Chung Cable Car Project is developed and financed by MTR Corporation. The mules spent two weeks in air-conditioned stables and had their long hair shed after arriving from Alberta, where temperatures could fall below zero degrees Celsius. Large fans were installed in the stables in the country park to provide cool accommodation for mules. The mules were scheduled to work seven hours a day, six days a week. But on Sundays and public holidays, they'll be able to have a break from work and enjoy their favourite pastime, rolling in the sand. Six lion cubs were born in an Argentine zoo, all sired by the same father, but to two different mothers. The two sets of cubs were born just a day apart, three to each lioness, in this zoo in Lujan, 70 kilometers west of Buenos Aires. Miguel Angel Ramirez, who manages the zoo, explained the living arrangements of the new family. They have the same father, and there are two lionesses who live together. One is called Azul, and the other is called Chloe. Lujan Zoo prides itself on its distinctive approach in rearing animals, raising the lion cubs with dogs and in close contact with people. The animals are fed whatever kind of food they wish for in order to suppress their hunting instinct and ensure that they do not come to regard animals or people as prey. As a result of this, visitors to the zoo get to touch and pet the animals, including the lions, who are fed by hand by the zoo employees. A female southern right whale and her calf frolicked some 50 metres from this beach in front of Rio's traditional Copacabana Palace Hotel. They drew hordes of schoolchildren, tourists and fishermen to watch the show. Environmentalists in particular were happy to see the return of the right whale, which was almost hunted into extinction, but is now being seen again along the Brazilian coast.
The southern right whale can grow to 18 meters and weigh up to 100 tons. But is still a threatened species. Lifeguards circled the whales in boats, trying to draw them away from the beach. The whales migrate north from Antarctica to mates from July to November off the coast of Brazil, South Africa and Australia, among other countries. This extremely rare albino crow, rescued by a young village boy in India's southern Kerala state, attracts hundreds of curious onlookers who believe it to be a divine gift. Attacked by his more rowdy black feathered brethren, the crow was hiding on a coconut tree when it was rescued by Shalan, a resident of a coastal village in the port city of Cochin. Shalan adopted the crow, calling it Shaki, meaning companion. Besides its plumes, the bird's legs and even the beak are snow white. Though partial albinism in birds is fairly common, complete albinism, especially in wild birds, is extremely rare. The near total lack of pigmentation leaves these birds with little camouflage and only very few of them survive. Not surprisingly, the news of Sharky spread like wildfire and hundreds of people turned up to see it. Considered to be amongst the most adaptable and intelligent birds in the world, crows have a highly evolved language and can even mimic the sounds made by other animals. In the wild, Crows live six to seven years. In captivity, they can reach 20 years. The oldest recorded age of a crow is 30 years. In the pouring rain across the street from New York's Madison Square Garden, Doormen for the Hotel Pennsylvania hail limos for their patrons. Nothing unusual there, except these guests of the four-legged variety. The hotel has opened its doors to thousands of dogs, offering all the luxuries that their human entourages would expect when paying upwards of $200 a night. It's a case of groom service rather than room service on this weekend. The primed, preened and pampered pooches have descended on New York City's Midtown ahead of the prestigious Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show at the Garden. Odomas Kama, longtime front desk manager at the Hotel Pennsylvania, earns himself a new job title at this time of year, Dog Concierge, meeting and greeting his fluffy guests like old friends. Kama does admit, though, inviting upwards of a thousand dogs into the hotel over the space of one weekend can have its headaches too. They make arrangements such as setting up an entire spa and even a comfort area in one of the ballroom spaces of the hotel to accommodate their guests' needs. And their needs, of course, include the call of nature. And so 75 bags of wood chip are spread every day across the floor of one of the spacious conference rooms a makeshift dog run and bathroom for when the dogs don't want to get their paws dirty, trapping the streets of Manhattan to relieve themselves. And by the Sunday afternoon, the day before the dog show at Madison Square Garden really gets going, the dog run will be overrun with dogs. To work off any excess energy, there are a variety of treadmills. Not for humans, but for the stars of the show, of course. And over the weekend, there'll be massages, baths, trimmings, and even spa treatments will be offered to the dogs. Although these dogs are surely some of the most pampered in the country, not all have had experience of the treadmill. 
The dogs are generally on their best behaviour and are well used to travelling, but with the fiercely competitive event looming, some nerves are naturally frayed at this time. And although hotel managers have had to deal with all the unusual smells and messes from their canine guests, one thing they won't need to worry about is any robes being stolen by their four-legged patrons. Why did the sea lion cross the road in central California farm country? That's what state wildlife officials were trying to figure out the day after a male sea lion was spotted wandering in a farmer's field 105 kilometers inland and about 1.8 kilometers from a canal, which was the nearest body of water. A dubious California Highway Patrol officer making a traffic stop on the same street was first to the scene after he was alerted by a passing motorist in the town about 192 kilometers southeast of San Francisco. The creature was dubbed Chippy, based on the nickname for highway patrol officers, after he climbed up on a California Highway Patrol squad car to sun himself and gaze at the growing crowd of gawkers while awaiting volunteers from the Marine Mammal Center in Sausalito to come and round him up. Biologists and volunteers from the center herded the barking sea lion into a pen and took him to the facility just north of San Francisco for a checkup. Meanwhile, throughout the ordeal, Chippy seems to have taken the whole adventure in his stride. Thousands of migrating Russian frogs are risking their lives to hop across busy highways in search of springtime love. But volunteer frog brigades have arrived to help these romantic driven amphibians cross the road and find happiness on the other side. The frogs and toads hop across Russia in their thousands. Many of them are literally at the crossroads of their lives, risking danger in the form of high-speeding trucks and cars at every jump. They are driven by the urge to gather in the lush swamps, their version of the land of milk and honey. Spring weather has taken command of their instincts to join up with one another under the budding swamp branches. But this is a journey fraught with danger. While many other European countries have built drainage ditches or special crossing for migrating frogs, Russia has been unable to construct the amphibian rescue routes. Many frogs, literally hundreds, wind up as frog pancakes on a quick trip to fog heaven. Enter the Frog Brigade. Groups of volunteer students and instructors from the Institute of Zoology have come to their rescue. They formed a two-line protection net, a winding frog wall to keep back most amphibians and brigades of frog scoopers to deal with the champion jumpers. The frog brigades then carry bucketfuls of frogs across the highway and dump them off at the promised land. Alive and well, the frogs are now able to concentrate on the important matters in frogs' life. and the Frog Brigade returns to its campsite along the roadside. Another day's work complete. Making the world safer for frogs.
A golden retriever from Barcelona, Spain, is the first dog to conquer the Aconcagua Mountain in Mendoza, Argentina, the highest peak in Latin America. Complete with two specially made jackets and four canine boots, Rubia, a golden retriever, accomplished the climb for which she was trained with her two human companions. At times, the dog's recovery rate was much faster than her trainers, Carlos Valverde and Mark Ortiga. Rubia's training started when she was seven months old and continued throughout her life. She was given regular dog food for the climb to 4,900 meters, after which she was given a special menu that consisted of a powdered meat base and prepared in a puree once a day. Throughout the entire climb, Rubia was attached to one of her trainers by a rope that measured six meters long. Animals are not usually allowed to climb the Aconcagua Mountains, which stand at 7,000 meters tall. However, an exception was made for Rubia, who is the integral part of a study about rescue animals at high altitudes. Forget Royal Ascot in England and make way for the Kenyan Goat Derby. Trainers from the KSPCA dress the goats in their racing gear and they're all geared up and ready to take on the track. Without a jockey's guidance, these goats rely on trainers to chase them down the track, waving straw brooms behind. Members of the audience watch in awe as the independent-minded animals struggle to find the shortest route to the finish line and seem eager to continue even after the winner has been announced. Proud of their performance, the goats return gracefully to the press gallery to comment on their commendable performance. Unlike the racing horses, these racing goats return at their leisure. The Royal Ascot Goat Races of Kampala was started in 1992 by Mr. and Mrs. Myers who had witnessed the pig race while living in Zimbabwe and they transformed the idea into a fundraising event. Even though this was the first goat derby in Kenya, the ascot atmosphere seemed to have caught on immediately. All money raised during the day went to the KSPCA, a charity dedicated to the welfare of animals in Kenya. Aquariums across Malaysia have a new star in their waters, the flower hornfish. It's the latest marine creature considered auspicious by the Chinese. The fish are found in coffee shops, retail outlets and private residences as fish breeders cash in on the latest trend and the demand from enthusiasts. The tropical fighting fish is about 0.3 meters long and has a strange but beautiful marking on its body that some enthusiasts say resemble Chinese characters or numbers. They also say the fish is very tame and can be petted and caressed by owners. For the public, the only unusual feature would be its hump on its head, making it look somewhat like a Boeing 747 aircraft.
It has become so popular that no aquarium in Malaysia is complete without a stock of the flower horn since it was crossbred by enthusiasts. Urban legends abound how lucky this fish is, with reports of owners striking lotteries. Some fish are affordably priced. Others have been known to go for a top price of 21,000 US dollars. Flowerhorn fish fans say as it grows, it develops markings on its colourful body. These markings change with age, but enthusiasts say words and numbers sometimes appear. And it's intelligent, as it shows affection for its owner, not unlike a cat or a dog. They won't purr or bark, but the fish definitely likes a pat on the head. The Worldwide Dog Exposition is a huge event featuring breeds from all over the world. And it comes to Rio de Janeiro as dozens of dogs are primed and preened for the top prize. 1,275 Brazilian dogs and 755 foreign dogs were being shown at the Rio Centro Convention Hall. They include dozens of different breeds, many that were unknown in Brazil. Some of the more exotic breeds participating are the Bazenji, Irish Wolfhound, and Tibetan Mastiff. One dog owner said the level was very good. There are very pretty poodles, and he's one. Brazilians were pleased to be hosting the show. And many of these pampered pups received VIP treatment, complete with special oxygen inhalations, relaxation baths, and of course, nights in five-star hotels. Owners say it helps if you relax the dogs. First, the ozone bath, when he or she starts to breathe oxygen produced by the ozone. Instantly, your pampered pet relaxes. And some of the participants in the Worldwide Dog Exposition, such as the German Shepherds, are worth more than 100,000 American dollars.